I've been putting this one off for way too long. You know that I'm a huge fan of containerizing things and then orchestrating that with Kubernetes and Rancher. But if I'm honest with myself, there's one workload I haven't migrated yet. And today's the day I'm finally going to do it. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about migrating a database from a virtual machine to a container within Kubernetes. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you want to continue the conversation about migrating some services to Kubernetes there, we can. So let's talk about migrating a MySQL database to Kubernetes. In my home lab services tour, I walk through all of my services that have been containerizing. And most of my services are containerized. I found that managing containers and config is a lot more efficient than managing entire virtual machines. But in that video, I hinted at one database that I didn't plan on messing with. And that database lives inside of a virtual machine, which is hosting MySQL. Now, the reason why I haven't containerized this yet is because, well, I've been putting it off. But before containerizing a lot of my workloads, this one was especially a one-off. This one virtual machine ran a very specific version of MySQL, and that was due to some of the services I was running. And as I started building out my Kubernetes cluster, I just left this one as a virtual machine. Now I know that that's a perfect use case for a virtual machine, but there's a lot going on in that database. And like I said in that video, I just didn't want to mess with it. So I guess today's the day I mess with it. So today, in this video, we're going to migrate a MySQL database from a virtual machine to a Docker container. That Docker container is hosted in Kubernetes, and I manage Kubernetes using something called Rancher. And if you're not familiar with Rancher, Rancher is an easy way to manage Docker and Kubernetes. If you need help setting this up, I've got a complete tutorial that I walk you through it step by step. Then you'll have an easy way to manage Docker and Kubernetes. And so with that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure that your existing virtual machine running MySQL is up and running. And you can do this a few ways, but I usually connect to my MySQL databases using something called Heidi SQL. Heidi SQL is a great utility on Windows to connect and manage MySQL databases. And this is just a GUI to help us visualize some of our tables, some of our users, and other things we can do within a terminal. But for most of this, we'll use a terminal, and I just thought it was worth mentioning that this is a great tool on Windows you can use. And if you're on Mac or Linux, dBeaver is another one. Then you'll want to SSH into your server. Once you SSH into your server, we'll want to do a dump of the database. I've created a backup script that will dump all of my databases and tar them up. This is also the backup script I use to run daily backups. But you'll want to be sure that this script is on your server and it's executable. You also want to be sure that you replace the username as well as the password. Also, be sure you update the backup directory. And worth mentioning, you shouldn't keep this on your server. This is a script we're going to run just to back up these databases. And this script will be in the documentation, which you can find in the description. Then we can execute this command. Now, this command might take a little bit depending on the sizes of your database. And you might notice this warning here. This is because we're passing our password in through the terminal. Now, there are ways around this and better ways to do this, but this is a quick and dirty backup that I created just to dump these. And if you know of a better backup command, let me know in the comments below. Then, once it's done, you'll want to run an ls, maybe with an l, to look at the files in that folder. We're looking for a very specific database. Mine is a WordPress database, and it's right there at the bottom. And so this was modified today. So this is the one we're looking for. Now, you'll see a bunch of other databases there. These are ones I don't use anymore. These are all test databases that I've used in the past. But if you have additional databases there, you'll want to keep an eye on them. And you'll want to copy them in this next step. So the next step is getting this file to the storage path that the Docker container will use for your new database. Now, you can rsync this over, you could use WinSCP, or you can use many ways to get to that server. But the important piece here is to copy each of these databases to your Rancher server, or again, however you're managing your storage within Rancher. Here, on my target machine, which is my Rancher server, I've rsynced my database file. And you notice that this is gzipped. Now, I gzip mine typically just to compress and save space, but we'll take care of that here in a little bit. Now that that file exists on a Rancher server, we should spin up a new workload with MySQL. So in a Rancher server, let's go to global, cluster, and our default cluster. Here, we'll create our MySQL workload. Click deploy. 
Let's call this MySQL. And for the Docker image, we'll want to choose our MySQL database. Now, MySQL has lots of versions, and it wouldn't be fair to mention MySQL without mentioning MariaDB. MariaDB is a drop-in replacement for MySQL that has different licensing. I'll just put it that way. And so you can choose whether or not you want to use MySQL or MariaDB. But either way, I highly recommend pinning it to a tag. And what I mean by adding a tag is actually pinning this to a tag in Docker. Now, if you don't specify one here, you're actually pinning it to latest. And a lot of people use latest because YOLO. But I wouldn't recommend latest for a database. And I wouldn't recommend latest for a lot of things. So here, you'll want to determine the best version of MySQL for you. In my case, I actually need to use a much older version of MySQL. And my version is 5. 6.39. But I would recommend going out to Docker Hub and finding the latest version for you. So at the time of creating this, the latest version is 8.0.21. And so I highly recommend pinning to that version if you want the latest. But like I said, I need an older version, so I'm going to pin to 5.6.39. Now we'll add a port mapping. So the default port for MySQL is 3306. So you'll want to set that. And if you manage your pods different or you have a load balancer in front of it, make adjustments. And for now, the only environment variable we need is our MySQL admin password. So let's set that. And worth mentioning, if you don't want to manage your secrets as environment variables, you can create Rancher secrets or Kubernetes secrets and pass them in that way. But we'll save that for another tutorial. One more thing you might want to adjust is your scaling and upgrade policy. Now, if you're using host port, you're going to have to use kill all pods, then start new. Because you can't spin up another pod that's occupying that same port. So we'll choose that since we chose host port. So let's spin up our MySQL database. And looks like it's running. Let's go into the logs. And it looks like we have our MySQL database running. So let's hop into Heidi SQL or whatever database tool you use to manage your databases and take a look at it. Okay, and after we connect, we can see our MySQL database. So as you can tell, we haven't imported our data yet. That's coming. But we can see here that this is just a normal, typical MySQL database. We have our information schema. We have our default MySQL database. And then we also have our performance schema. We'll also need to create a volume for our data to live. So let's add a volume. So let's click add volume. So after clicking add volume, you see lots of ways to manage your storage. Now you should choose the best one for you, but if you want to use a directory from a node, we'll choose by mount a directory from a node. Here we can name this MySQL and the path on the node, let's create that real quick. And on my Rancher server, I created a folder called MySQL data. This will house our MySQL databases. Keep in mind that this is not the same location that we used earlier for our backup data. We'll use that in a little bit. But here's the path of where we're going to store our new data. And then the path on the server is going to be slash var slash lib slash MySQL. And then after our MySQL container has started, we can look in our data folder. And we should see some files now. This is a good sign. This means our data is mapped from the container to our host. And so now all we need to do is import our backups. But you might be thinking, how are we going to remote into this server when it's a Docker container? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. First of all, we could use a GUI tool remotely to import that database. We've already set up Heidi SQL, so we could do it that way. But that's no fun. And it's not really the Docker way. But really, it's up to you. But let's do it the Docker way. So the way that we do that is we exec into that pod. And once we exec into that pod, we can run our import script. But here's the other challenge. Our backup archive lives on disk, but not in the Docker container. So let's temporarily map one more path. So back in Rancher, let's edit this workload. Let's add one more volume. Let's call this folder restore. And here's the path on the node that we saved our backup. And let's just mount this to slash home. Then we'll save. So once this comes back up, our container should have access to both our backup directory as well as our database directory. And so let's go into this MySQL workload and let's exec into this pod. And now we're inside of the actual container. And so let's CD into home, do an LS, and there's our backup archive. So first, let's create our new database. This is where we'll import the data to. First, we'll log into MySQL, then we'll put our password, and now we're logged into MySQL. Then we'll create our database using this command. Then we can exit out. And now we can import our data. So this is the command we'll use to import our database. So it's zcat, our archive that we backed up. Then we're going to pipe that into MySQL. The username is root. Then dash p is going to prompt us for a password. And then the target database. And zcat is just a utility to look at the contents of a compressed file without actually decompressing it. So we'll run that. Supply our password. And it seems to be done. So let's take a look real quick. So if I go back into Heidi SQL 
and refresh this, we should now see our database. So this is really awesome. Our database is now running inside of a Docker container, which is inside of Kubernetes, which means that now I can decommission that old virtual machine. But let's do a couple of cleanup tasks now that we've imported this database. So we'll need to go back into Rancher and we'll want to edit this workload. We'll want to remove that volume we were using just to do the import. So let's delete this restore volume. We no longer need that and save. And just to be sure, let's exec back into this CD into slash home, do an LS and it's no longer there. And there's one more thing we probably want to do. That's schedule backups. This is kind of tricky, but what we're going to use is a Kubernetes cron job. You can do that in Rancher by creating a new workload. Here, let's name our MySQL backup. For the Docker image, you'll want to be sure to pin this to the same version as your MySQL server. Next, you'll want to expand the workload types. We're going to create a cron job. For the sake of this tutorial, we're going to run this every five minutes but you should probably schedule it according to your needs. For environment variables, I have needed to set PUID and PGID. This is to help with permissions. And you can find this by running ID within your server. Mine is 1001, but adjust to your needs. Next, we'll need to add a volume. So this is gonna be the volume that this cron job is gonna back up to. I recommend creating a folder called MySQL Backups. In there, we'll wanna place one more thing, and that's our backup script. This is the backup script I mentioned earlier. And worth noting, you should probably secure the folder that it's in, just like any other password or secret. But here, there's a couple things to note. First, the backup directory is gonna be slash home. Now, this sounds odd, but that's the slash home inside of the container. Next is gonna be your MySQL username. Then it's gonna be your MySQL password. And I'll hop down to port because this is pretty basic. This is the port that it's running on. And for MySQL host, I'm just naming mine MySQL. Now, you're probably wondering why MySQL? Well, that's a great question. So we can find the answer to that in our service discovery. And if we go back to our cluster, then we go to service discovery, we'll see here that my MySQL pod that's running actually has a name of MySQL. And you can see here the cluster IP, but that's not really important. The important piece is what we name this service. So we name this service MySQL, and we can refer to this service from other pods by this name. That's kind of a high level of how service discovery works in Kubernetes. So that's where I'm getting the name MySQL. If you have a different name here that's pointing to your pod or your target, you'll want to change that. Then in our script, we'll want to save this. Then we'll want to make it executable. Okay, so let's go back to our cron job we were configuring. Another thing we'll need to configure is the command we're going to run. So we should show advanced options. We'll have to set the entry point to slash bin slash sh. And then the command is our script. We'll need to set the working directory too, which is slash home. And after we have that set, we can click launch. And after we launch it, we can see an error. Now, this is to be expected. So this is the odd part about running this container. This container needs a password when it starts up, so we'll need to set that. Now this doesn't need to be your root password for your database. We just need to fill it with something so that the container can actually start up without an error. We'll create one more variable called MySQL root underscore password, and then we'll save. Now you can see our backup is running. Let's take a look in the directory. So if we look back in our directory, we can see our databases are backed up. We can see our script, we can see the MySQL database, and then we can see the one we just imported. And if we go back to our pod history, we can see that this is successful. So now we're able to back up our databases on a schedule. Now I know that there are different and probably better ways to do this. If you know, let me know in the comments section. But I think we accomplished our goal. We moved MySQL from an old virtual machine to a Kubernetes workload. We then exported that data from the old database server, imported that into Docker and Kubernetes, and then we created a cron backup job to back up our database on a schedule. And now I no longer need to put off decommissioning that old virtual machine. So what do you think about moving your database to Kubernetes? Do you have some databases out there that you want to move to Docker and Kubernetes? Or are you just going to do like I did and put it off forever? If so, let me know in the comments section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So, thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. Want to come here? He's, he's, uh, he's kind of wild. Well, actually, he's really wild. So, one of my dogs, well, actually, they're both. We got the Humane Society. One is just like so calm, so chill. The other one, not so much. And so he's in here now. I figured him in here is probably a little bit better than him out there.
Here is the wild beast right here. He is he is so wild. He is so wild. Like he looks tiny, but man, he is such a handful. He bites me, he bites my wife, he attacks me, he attacks him a dog, he barks at everyone. And he looks so calm right now, but he is so crazy. But he's so good. <laughs> so, yeah, that's him. He's uh he is such a handful. Anyway, sorry about all the interruptions. He's just